So communicator outlook, this is another very, very common, you know, issues with the, with the outlook plugins. And we, you know, we have a variety of customers uh, either running them or not running them based on what other plugins they're using. So you have three plugins that the short tail integrates with the local version of outlook. We don't, Shorta doesn't doesn't care if you're running Office 365, if you're running an Exchange, you know, if you're running, uh, you know, Google Apps. What are you running on as far as your your backend email server system is? It really cares about the local version of Outlook. As long as it's a supported version of Outlook, and I think it's 2010, 2013. I think 2007 is no longer officially supported, but we do have a lot of customers still running 2007 uh, without any issues. And I'm even running the the latest version of Office uh, from 365, um, which is just getting ready. I think of the new 14.2 build uh, that supports Windows 10. It also supports the, um, the Office 2015 version from 365. So the first one is your Outlook upload. So um, that, that, that's where you see that second checkbox on the top says Upload Outlook Personal Contacts. If you hit the Upload options there, you could see and you can pick like what folders you have access to. Um, based on your your AD credentials, it's going to look at what if you have any access to, um, you know, public folders that you know or um, that have access to contacts in them from an from a an AD level. And if you do have those, it will import those you know for this user on a per user basis. You can also turn off that and say I just want to upload my personal contacts. And that this this plugin rarely causes any issues. It's you know, sometimes if you have a ton of context, it can slow, slow down the, you know, the start of your outlook a little bit. But in most cases, if you have less than 15, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 contacts, you know, it, it should it should load those 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 contacts within a few seconds into, into the system. So, and those contacts are pushed out over to your short tail server where we store those those uh, into your personal directory file. So that way, when you're a communicator and you start typing in the directory, we query that file instead of loading down your your pc to always have those directories loaded into ram those we query those based on what you type off the off the server so like i said that one rarely ever have to disable it the the next one is your voicemail integration and that's where you'll see i have the uninstall button for the voicemail integration this is the one that shows the the voicemail messages inside of your outlook you know you get the little tape message you can listen to them you can forward them this is the one that causes 80 at least 80 percent of outlook issues for, as far from a short tail uh, perspective i know we've had issues in the past with um, the webex uh, plugins uh you know some of the different plugins and short tails rewrote this plugin numerous times to try to reduce the you know the the amount of conflicts we're having and there's in, in most cases just there's just so many different plugins that you can have um i know i have like a survey monkey plugin you know when i have different um you know desktop sharing you know plugins and stuff like that the go to meeting go to webinar has an outlook plugin so this is the one that usually causes the most issues and in most cases if a customer is having an issue with it they'll have the end user just click that in uninstall button and you know close outlook hit the uninstall it'll uninstall the voicemail plugin your contacts are still going to work you can still check your voicemail from your communicator client all of that you're just going to really lose just that tape message inside of your outlook you can still do email delivery of voicemails and stuff like that you're really just losing managing and deleting of a voicemail using the tape message in your outlook that it deletes it on your communicator so we have a lot of customers who don't run that plugin if they're running other plugins um, that are that are causing issues and that's the most the most common issue you're going to see is outlook hanging so you open up outlook and it just hangs at the start screen outlook crashes and then outlook pops up another box saying hey would you like to start outlook in safe mode you know that's the the, the typical issue that you're going to see with the voicemail plugin so easy thing to do hit uninstall relaunch outlook see if it you know if it's still doing it okay let's uninstall you know the other ones and stuff until we find which particular uh, plugin is causing your issues but if i'm putting you know if i'm betting i'm betting on the the voicemail plugin is causing your problem so uninstall that one see how it works then we can pull some of those logs from the voicemail one and we can start seeing if it'll list out um which you know which add-in is causing the issues most of the time the add-in problem is is whatever add-in loads last with an outlook wins so if the voicemail plugin from short tail and the webex plugin are both using this we're calling trying to call the same file whichever plugin add-in loads last wins so if the, vo if the webex plugin launches after the short tail plugin it's gonna it's gonna you know cause ours to you know to, to cause issues so 
The last plugin is your calendar integration. This one's used if you have an SA100 for a conference bridge and you want to open up a calendar invite and hit the the meet you know the, the conference button and, and, and have it generate a, a meeting ID and everything for the call. That's what is used there. The other thing that this one gives you is the call handling mode changes. So when you're scheduling a meeting, you can say during this meeting, put me in out of office or I'm going on vacation. So for this week, change my call handling mode to out of office during this time. And that's the, the integration that does this. The other checkbox you have there is to use the Outlook automated call handling. So what it'll do, do is it, it'll automatically look through your calendar invites and figure out, okay, these are meetings and stuff. And it's going to try to, um, it, it's going to try to guess and make a best, you know, um, guess as far as when it should change your call handling mode for all your appointments that are already booked. Uh, you know, all the new ones that you book, you're going to have the control of changing, okay, out of office or any meeting, but the automated one will automatically look at your appointments and try to make the best choice. In most cases, it's just going to choose any meeting unless you happen to choose out of office as the, the outlook mode that it has, and then it will use the out of office mode. But in most cases, if you turn that on, um, it will just use the, the any meeting mode. The one thing to be careful there is if you turn that on and you're, you go into in a meeting for your phone and your meeting is actually a phone call, somebody's going to be calling you. If they call you a few minutes late, they're going to get your voicemail because your Outlook is going to tell it, oh, you're in a meeting at 1030. So your phone's going to immediately change at 1030 to in a meeting. They call you at 1033. They get your voicemail. You then get an email. Where, hey, you have a voicemail. You listen to it. Say, oh, it's Chris trying to call me a few minutes late. That's the only caveat I'll tell you about using that. Some customers really like it. Some customers, if they do a lot of phone calls, don't like it. You can uninstall that one. Like I said, is you know I would probably say you know maybe 10 or 15 percent of the time that'll cause uh, the issues. Most customers aren't doing calendar integrations and when they're or companies when they're writing Outlook plugins. So we have a lot less integration problems with the, with the calendar plugin than we do the voicemail plugin.